آل محمد کی تعلیمات سے آشنا کرتا رہے تو میں آپ کو پتا ہے جناب حضرت الاسلام شیخ محمود الفیاض صاحب جو ہیں وہ آپ نے ابتدائی آپ کا تعلق جو ہے وہ افغانستان سے آپ پیدائش ماں ہوئی لیکن آپ اپنا ہائی سکول کرنے کے بعد آپ جو ہے وہ نجف تشریف لے آئے کیونکہ تیس سال سے زیادہ آپ کے والد بزوار شیخ محمود الفیاض جو ہیں وہ آیت اللہ خوئی کے ساتھ رہے ہیں اور آیت اللہ خوئی کے بعد جو خوزہ ہے اس کو شیخ وشیر اور آیت اللہ فیاض جو ہیں یہی لوگ دیکھتے ہیں آیت اللہ سستانی کی سرپستے میں یہ جو خوزہ جو آج نجف میں چل رہا ہے اس کے اندر آج بھی درس خارج اگر آپ جائیں گے ان کی ویب سائٹ پہ جو ہے آج بھی ان کے درس خارج وہاں پر موجود ہیں آج بھی اس عمر میں ان کے والی جو ہیں جن کے سلسلے میں آپ اتشف لائیں آپ کی جو ولادت انیس سو تیتیس میں ہوئی ہے اب آپ انیس سو تیتیس سے دوہزار بارہ میں اپنے آپ ان کی عمر کا اندازہ لگا لیں اور آج بھی آپ درس خارج دیتے ہیں یہ ہمارے علماء کی جو ہے وہ عظمت کی ایک دلیل ہے کہ لوگ ماں نورمری اس ایج کے اندر کام نہیں کر پاتے لیکن اسی ایج میں وہ جا کے اپنے تمام جو ہے وہ علم کے اس رانائیوں کو بلندیوں کو امت تک پہنچاتے ہیں تو یہ آج بھی ان کے جو ہے درست خارج بحث کا سلسلہ جاری آپ نے اس کے بعد جو ہے آپ رائے لیکن کیوں کہ لازمی صدام کا زمانہ تھا فریڈم نہیں تھا آ کے لیے تو آگا محمود فیاض وہاں سے ایران چلے گئے پھر وہاں پہ آپ نے ابتدائی جو ہے تعلیم وہاں پہ نجف میں حاصل کی اس کے بعد آپ وہاں چلے گئے اور وہاں جانے کے بعد درست خارج کے اختتام تک آپ قم ہی میں رہے اور قم میں جو مختلف علماء جن کے نام اس میں آپ کے پاس بھی آئیے لکھے ہوئے ہیں جو جید وہاں کے علماء تھے آپ نے ان سے قصبے فیض کیا اور آج خود جو ہے وہ جید علماء میں شمار ہوتے ہیں جتل اسلام و مسلمین ہیں اور ان کا جو ابھی سب سے بڑا اہم جو کردار ہے وہ کیا ہے کہ آپ اپنے والد جو مرج علی قدر ہیں اور جو ہے گرانڈ آیت اللہ ہیں ان کی جو ہے تمام جو ہے ایکٹیوٹی کو آپ جو ہے وہ ادارہ کرتے ہیں آپ ان کو جو ہے تمام کو دیکھتے ہیں نہ صرف ایک آفیس بلکہ جو تین آفیسز ہیں نجف کا آفیس قم کا آفیس یا جو ہے وہ مشہد کا آفیس اور جہاں بھی ان کے آفیسز ہیں آپ ہی اس کے انچارج ہیں اور انہی تمام امور کو آپ ان کی طرف سے انجام دیتے ہیں تاکہ جو کوئی بھی ان کے مقلدین ہیں وہ ان کے تمام سوالوں کے جواب ان کے تمام جو ہے مشہد تمام جو امور ہیں ان کو انجاب جو ایک بہت بڑا ایک سسٹم ہے ہمارے ہاں جس کو چلانا آسان نہیں ہے ہمارا ایمان نے بھی اپنے نوابین کو رکھا اور علماء کے جو فرزند ہیں یا ان کے جو اقربہ ہیں وہ اس امور کو انجام دیتے ہیں جس کے وجہ سے آج یہ نظام ہدایت جاری و ساری ہے اسی کو ریپرزنٹ کرتے ہیں ہمارے واقع کشمی بھائی کے جو یہاں پر جو ہے وہ پہلے کیلیفورنی میں تھے اب یہاں پر آگئے ہیں اور وہ تمام مراجع جتنے بھی ہمارے مراجع ہیں اور مراجع کی جو بھی ان کی ریپرزنٹیشن ہے وہ آپ کے پاس ہے تاکہ ان کی طرف سے یہاں پر دین کے کو پرموٹ کر سکیں ان کے سوالات کے جواب دے سکیں ان کے ذریعے جو رکم شریعہ ہیں ان کو جو ہے وہ اجازے وغیرہ دے کر اس کو آگے بڑھا سکیں تاکہ امور جو ہدایت ہے وہ برابر آگے بڑھ سکے بس یہی انشاءاللہ آپ نے جو انشاءاللہ زحمت کی خاص کرم شکر گزار ہیں بہت خاص طور پر جو ہے یہاں کے منیجمنٹ کے اور رضوان بھائی کے اور جو لوگ مہاں گئے تھے انہوں نے اسپیشلی دعوت دی اور شکر گزار ہیں خاص کر کے آغا محمود فیاض کے اور ہمارے آقر کشمیر صاحب کے اور ہمارے مولانا فوزی کے انہوں نے اس میں تعاون کیا تاکہ وہ یہاں تک آ سکیں اور آج آپ اٹلانٹا کی مومنین کے سامنے یہ تمام ہستیاں موجود ہیں تاکہ آپ ان کے جو ہے علم سے اور ان کے چہرے کو دیکھ کر جو عبادت کا فیض اسے حاصل کر سکیں انشاءاللہ خدا ان کے تمام خاص کر کے جو آیت اللہ سستانی آیت اللہ فیاض آیت اللہ جو ہے بشیر ہیں اور تمام جو ہمارے مراج علی قدر ہیں علماء ہیں خدا ان کے علم کو دراز کرے اور ان کا سایہ ہمارے سرگون سلامی کے ساتھ محفوظ رکھے اور جو لوگ بھی ان کی خدمت کر رہے ہیں ان کے اس امور میں مدد کر رہے ہیں خدا اس کو جاری و ساری رکھے تاکہ ہدایت کا سسرہ جاری و ساری رکھ سکے مادام رضوان بھائی اور تمام جو ہمارے منیجمنٹ کے لوگ ہیں خدا ان کی بھی توفیقات میں اضافہ کرے تاکہ وہ ایسے موقع ہمیں بار بار فراہم کر سکیں اور ہم اس کے ذریعے ان کے وجود سے ہمیشہ اپنے قلوب کو منور کرتے رہیں میں پھر مولانا نفیس کا اور ہمارے جو دوسرے علماء ہیں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں میں ان کا بھی شکر گزار ہوں کہ وہ آئے اور آنے کے بعد اس محفل کو پر رونق بنایا خدا ان کی بھی توفیقات میں اضافہ کرے ان کے تمام پریشانوں کو دور فرما دے تاکہ ان کی زندگی بھی کامیابی سے گزر سکے انشاءاللہ میں دوبارہ اپنے تہہ دل سے تمام علماء کا اور خاص کر کے حجرت اللہ محمد الفیاض صاحب کا تہہ دل سے خیر مقدم کرتا ہوں اور باقر کشمی صاحب کا تہہ دل سے خیر مقدم کرتا ہوں ہم اٹلانڈا کے تمام مومنین ان کے آنے پر بہت خوش ہیں اور خدا اسی طرح ان کو پھر موقع فرام کرے تاکہ وہ پھر ہمارے درمیان بار بار آ سکیں والسلام ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ میں باقر کشمیر کو دعوت دوں گا کہ آئیں اور اپنے معروضات کو آپ خدمت میں پیش کریں انشاءاللہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم ا
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيب إله العالمين المسمى في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم محمد صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا Our distinguished guest, dear ulama, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Another guest from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, another opportunity visit and meet this mu'min faces. Another chance we have to visit the city and come to Shia communities to meet, discuss, and listen, and hear from you. Imam organization, as you know, most of you maybe know, the main purpose we have to serve the advancement of Shia Muslim people in North America through different projects, programs, and activities. One of these projects, one of the most important projects we are working on, as you know, we practice it here in this city more than one time, to build strong relationship between followers of Ahlul Bayt السلام, with the jurists in Najaf, in Holy Najaf, in the Hawza al the seminary in the holy city of Najaf al Ashraf. Imam organization is taking initiative and take action on this project with coordinating with different offices of different marajas. This is maybe only organization, Shia organization, is working very hard on collaboration with different maraja. We had visitation from the office of Ayatollah al-Udma Sayyid Sistani. We had visitation also from the office of Ayatollah al-Udma Sayyid Muhammad Saeed al-Hakim. And today, tonight, we have representative of Ayatollah al-Udma, Sheikh Ishaq al-Fayyad. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us more grace, more opportunities in the future. We proud, we honor by uh, visitation visit, uh, representative of other marajas too. Our distinguished guest, Samahat Hujjat al Islam wal Muslimin, Sheikh Mahmoud al Fayyad, son of Ayatollah al Udma, Sheikh Ishaq al Fayyad, he is carrying out important message, very important message from his father to us, especially to the Shia. Uh, lives in uh, to Shia who live in the United States of America. We will hear this message. We will listen to this message, the translated one, by our friend, Sheikh Hanif, inshallah. And I expect from everyone to hear very carefully and do some research and inquiry about each advice, each point his eminence uh, mentioned that. Think about it twice and think deeply rooted and understand what maraja, what our jurists expect from us, what they need from us. Who us? We as a Shia, American 
people who live in this country. There is a lot of responsibility we have. It is not enough. We immigrant to this country. It's not enough. We get married in this country. We get children, and we take care about a new generation, and that's it. Life is not limited to the financial issue or education and get some degree issue. No, we have responsibility. We have responsibilities. Look to other communities in the United States. Look to other people from different nations, from different backgrounds, how they live, how they work, and how they have vision or build a nice vision for themselves and to their uh, generation, in new generations. We will find ourselves, we are more rich than others because if others, they do some research, they do some study, they do some hard work, we have to do same, but we are more rich for this reason, that we have the noble and great religion and school of thought that is the Ja'fariya school of thought, Ahlul Bayt school of thought. If you go back a little bit to history, you will see our great maraja, fuqaha, jurist. They sacrificed a lot. They used to give a lot during history. Do you know the seminary of Najaf al-Ashraf? It stood since 1,000, over 1,000 year till today. With what? With government? Absolutely no. With some support from different countries? Absolutely no. With support from any group or, or party? Absolutely not. Only supported by sacrificing of the maraja, ulama, and your support. Your only and no one else. So many countries, so many groups, they have tons of billions they like to offer to Hawza al to ulama, but they refuse it. And they will refuse it. They want to keep our Hawza, our seminaries, independent and stand only based on Allah's support, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and mu'mineen support, only. Or otherwise, we will be like others. The conclusion, the result. If you look to other religions, to other school of thoughts, all of them, not most, all of them, they get wrong way. There's so many corruption happened for so many religions and so many school of thoughts in the entire of the world, world, except, except Shia. Except Shia because we are related to infallible Imams and this relation who work on it, only Fuqaha, Ulama. So we have to value their work. We have to support them. We have to build very strong relationship with them to keep ourselves, to keep our religion and our school of thought for our new generation. This visitation is not for nothing. When ulama comes from there, they spend time, they, spend, they give effort, they spend money, they, they leave their families, they are away weeks, months from their families for what? What they are seeking? What we want. Think about it a little bit. This is not just a small gathering and we say salam alaikum and that's it. No, there is a program. There is a vision. There is goals and objectives. We need to work on that. Our relation to our maraja is not just fun issue or just a ritual issue or cultural issue. No, there are some religious duties we are doing. We are working on it. Imagine that. God not willing, we cut this relation. If we disconnect this relation, think what will happen for our communities, for our new generation, even for ourselves. 
So try to work on it very hard. Maulana, during yesterday and today, he was mentioning so many things about Hawza Almiya and scholars. And by the way, he asked me to relate this message to you that his eminence, Ayatollah Al-Udma, Sheikh Ishaq al fayyad is praying for you. During his supplications, he memorized and he remember you, the Shia everywhere and in the United States. And also they expect from you to pray for them. May Allah protect them. May Allah prolong their life. And also, Mulana says that his eminence say to all Shia people, his salam and say salam alaikum. One of the important things about Ayatollah al udma Sheikh Ishaq al fayyad Listen to this lesson. Let us learn some lesson from our Miraja. There is different opinion based on the inquiry and study in the Hawza. We have Ishtihad. Ishtihad means everyone become in that level who can get the uh, the knowledge uh, verdict from Quran or Sunnah Nabawiya. So based on that, he will give his opinion. Normally, some different opinion will become between Miraja, Fuqaha. And this is a very healthy issue. It's supporting the Ishtihad, supporting our uh, uh, Hawza. One of the important things and very sensitive issue uh, there's different opinion be, uh, between Ayatollah uh, al-Udma Sayyid Sistani and Sheikh Ishaq al-Fayyad about the crescent issue. Our annual yearly problems, no? Maybe monthly sometimes. Actually, it's not a problem. Sometimes we make a problem. Between parentheses. Anyhow, so Maulana Sheikh Ishaq al-Fayyad, let's say tomorrow is Wednesday, for himself, strongly, he gets certain tomorrow is the first day of Shawwal, as the Eid day. Do you know what he does? He keeps it quiet, he doesn't talk. He say we have to respect the greatest marja, Sayyid Sistani, to keep unity of the community. It's too much. It's too much. Think about it a little bit. His opinion, he is mushtahib. Between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's safe. He knows his duty. But just to keep community and make good relationship and good collaboration between him and other maraji', he is ready to keep his opinion away and stand with the great and the highest marja'. We need to learn these lessons. So Imam organization, when we build a relation with different maraja, we bring a representative here, we need to listen to them and learn from them how to live, how to love each other, how to respect each other, which is important and very neat. And so and so, so many stories. Let me stop here and give more time to listen to his advice and to the uh, message from his eminence, Ayatollah al udma al-Sheikh Ashaq al-Fayyad. May, uh, may Allah prolong his life. With hearing to Sheikh uh, Hanif Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad wa alaykum. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا وولدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشافي نفوسنا ابي القاسم محمد وعلى اهل بيته طيبين طاهرين معصومين صادقين ان شاء الله um, i was asked to read the translation of the message that was sent to us by his eminence ayatollah fayad and inshallah i ask you all to make dua that i do justice by relating these very powerful words to our esteemed guest the ulama that is present the mu'minin wa mu'minat assalamu alaykum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh our esteemed ayatollah he began all praise is due to allah lord of the worlds may peace and blessings shower the greatness of god's creation the seal of his messengers muhammad and his purified progeny salawat <laughs> for as long as the shia may allah aid them with victory have been known to history they have been the repository of safekeeping knowledge of guidance they took it upon themselves to be sincerely devoted to that knowledge whenever whenever their imams raised a banner firm knowledge of firm knowledge and lofty morals they would follow his lead and trod his path even if that was at the cost of being exiled getting excluded and losing worldly gains nonetheless they remained jubilant and pleased they considered it a gain for themselves while they considered what came to the miserable opposition and its abundant collection to be a loss as a result the exalted allah increased their certainty giving it a sweet taste in their hearts he mixed their faith with love affection and allegiance and every good soul among them for any slip up they may have Allah has taken them off the hook through the righteous deeds they performed to make up for it or through a manifestation of their allegiance to the rightful guardians of truth those whom Allah has chosen to place the truth with until the hour of reckoning the subsequent teachings of the imams peace be upon them alayhi salatu wasalam as well as their as their guidance reiterate the importance of honoring the souls of the shia and building up strength of their confidence regarding the promise of their lord confidence which is unmoved by the winds of storms because it includes pearls of wisdom regarding peaceful coexistence with other schools of thought pearls of wisdom which draw people toward them and have them turn to their call that is for those among them who lend an ear and have an open mind hence the imams were like lamps in the midst of darkness take for instance the words of imam abu abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam he said you should have god wariness vigilance diligence you should speak the truth return trust have good character and be a good neighbor be callous toward yourselves through things other than your tongue be an adornment and do not be a disgrace you should be you should also prolong the duration of your bowing and prostration in another uh, narration <clears throat> the imam tells us be callers who call out to the people with things other than your tongues such that they may see vigilance diligence prayer and goodness from you for indeed that is a caller in another narration he says one whose vigilance is not discussed by veiled women in their veiled quarters is not amongst our followers the shia and if there is one in a village with 10000 people a 10000 men and there is someone amongst god's creation who is more vigilant than him this such person is not amongst our closest friends aulia the narrations encourage believers to hold fast to the faith and not be fooled by the worldly life of many 
However, after this introduction, we will now focus on the following points. The first point he lets us know about is, it has become clear from what, is, what we hinted at that the Shia individual, the believer, is a caller to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is someone who has been entrusted in every place in which he or she may reside. If this individual is vigilant in staying away from sin and diligent in the faith which he or she practices, then know that lofty character and vigilance for God are not gained together except in one who has been intensely sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that point, souls will be inclined towards him or her naturally and his or her words will be accepted. That is because his or her actions are proof of his or her words. Lost and confused souls are confronted with tranquil souls and they turn to them even if they do not act as they act. This model of a person in humanity is prized by every society because the individual integrates within the society which feels safe regarding him or her, not fearing his or her actions. Some Western civilized societies today are vibrant with certain virtuous qualities which have become an aspect of the social norms. Such qualities are considered in, in, considered in selecting potential citizens. If that be the case, then the entrenchment of such qualities in the souls of the believers can play a role in performing them for citizenship. That would allow the believers to become a reason for the various nations of the world to enjoy this faith. It would lead them to things beyond what they aimed for by it. They would become aware of the true blessings of Islam, of faithful devotion to the exalted Allah, the one, the all, the all paramount. It would become a source of glory for them. Granted, a believer would only do so for the motive of seeking awareness and worship to Allah the Exalted. Because the believer knows that God loves these qualities, not out of duplicity, doing so for other than God or other motives. The second point he relates to us is, because the believers in some distant Western countries must necessarily coexist and deal with peoples of, other, of, of those countries with their various religions, the predominance of weak religious values and being trying to develop material gains. They must take their precautions for themselves and pay attention to specify times and places to meet one another and revive the tenets of their faith. They should nominate individuals to teach the ignorant amongst them, to guide the misguided amongst them, and to convince those who depart from the correct faith through the use of clear evidence and the honorable religious legal rulings. All of that should be done in order to bring, in order to bring down the hurdles of hardship, such that the faith becomes friends, becomes their friends and their environment, which is foreign to their faith. If they do not do this, there is a fear that they may dissolve in the midst of such societies. Their religious spirit may be lost. Following one's whims as well as ignorance may dominate. Consequently, this will lead to the birth of generations among them who are distant from religious values. They will lose themselves and their families and relatives along with them. Number three, in order to avoid such ills, one can found centers of intellectual thought and hold religious sermons. The language of the modern times should be taken into account. Hence, the positives and negatives of Western social contrast should be pointed out. These should be distinguished from the nature of the religious concepts. The consequences of the negatives and the cons of such societies, as well as the fraud of their short-term benefits, should be explained. For it is certain that the more a human being depends on civil society and personal abilities without connecting to God through worship or remembrance, which manifests in actions, the more aspects of error become apparent due to this overindulgence. This is sure to reflect upon the society. If this were to be analyzed and its consequences were to be presented properly, on the one hand, and if the instincts regarding the need for uh, the absolute creator 
the one toward whom all souls direct themselves, were to be awakened on the other hand, and if all were to be coupled with clear-cut proof that the Islamic faith is truth, this would yield a secure parameter, a perimeter for the Muslim youth. For others, it would also be a deep signifier indicating the correctness and authenticity of our beliefs and faith. It is also not secret that reviving the commemoration rituals of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam has a role in the conscious and depth of the Islamic cause, generally in the hearts of people and specifically in the school of the Ahlul Bayt. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all as well. Indeed, generally, societies empathize with the ideals and values which are embodied in the struggles of individuals. In the moments of human interaction with the lofty values manifested in certain stands and actions, the darkness of concepts gained unwillingly or unconsciously due to indulging in a particular way of life is removed from oneself. This shaking within the soul is a result of, ring, of the ring sounded by the tragedy of the master of the martyrs. With all of its authority, authentic, with all of its authentic factors at play, from the side of Imam Hussein and his family, peace, peace be upon them all, to what, salawat, please. From the side of Imam Hussein and his family, to what they face, from his enemies who claim to follow his faith. This will remove those souls from the cloak of plunging into obey evil, such as, host, such as hoarding, greed, and love of debasing desires, and drag them compellingly to stand in line with the call of humanity's innate, innate nature. The call will have them join up with the caravan of virtue, honor, and lofty meanings with Imam Hussein, alayhi salatu wasalam and his companions, after which a human being would not accept for himself or herself a surface level faith which is polluted by sins and faults. It should be noted that reviving the commemoration rituals of Imam Hussein wasalam, is the best guarantee for raising young generations with religious values. and virtues. That is because these rituals include practice beloved to the souls and deed. The actions of the limbs solidify the gains of the hearts of them. The fourth point he makes is, he says, it has been noticed that some believers depart their home, their home countries to foreign countries without having a clear goal or being confident of their status in those societies. Thus they become a burden of weaklings on the believers, to say the least. Neither did they gain from what they traveled toward, nor did they satisfy an aspect of the need in that society. Rather, they returned with broken souls, no longer finding some of the beliefs and righteous considerations which they had once rested in their souls. In light of this, believers in such societies should strive to attain excellence academic scores and understand the responsibility that is placed on their shoulders. For indeed, power lies in action or in knowledge which an individual there knows well as power for the principles and values which he or she serves. If the people of a single faith and school of thought over there connect to the connection of religious education, then that will be the source of power for them and a guarantee to protect their interests. We also anticipate that the increase in their number of belie in the number of believers in those countries will give hope to reduce the extreme the extremeness of misunderstanding Islam, faith, and attributes of the believers. That is, the extremeness as marked by them by those with the prejudice and other beneficiaries who paint an evil image of Islamic countries. The formation of Shia thought ever since its beginning is in the first generation after the advent of Islam has not been limited to religion or group. Rather it has, rather it is the conscience of Islam and its call 
a call which was answered by the people of every kind. The work that worked diligently in seeking knowledge and teaching until they cast the summary of their knowledge in their verdicts. That is why you see the Shia refer back to the grand jurors based on the principle which is confirmed by all intellectuals. The ignorant ones refer to the knowledgeable ones. For they are unable to reach the basis for their verdict, which represents God's judgment in the matter in question. And they do not find it okay, rationally speaking, to refer to anyone but the most learned one in order to fulfill the legal responsibilities laid down by the system of law which they believe in. Hence, it is the most learned scholars is proven to, unless, hence, if the most learned scholar is proven to them, or if his, uh, if his most learned nature is at the level to allow them to emulate him, they do not hesitate to refer to him no matter what the nationality or ethnicity may be. There is nothing strange about that, for the intellectuals of the entire world agree that if they are assured regarding the qualifications or knowledge of a given person in an area which they need him, they turn to him with their need, follow him and obey his command to attain their objective. Emulating a grand jurist is not different from this intellectual practice. It should not be seen as strange. Then, if an American citizen, for instance, emulates a grand jurist in Najaf or Qom, because the grand jurist is directing him or her within the framework of his or her faith dictates that, and that does not at all contradict the contradiction the conditions for his or her citizenship with all that it entails in terms of observing agreements and avoiding violations. Yes, when it comes to matters dealing with government in that country, the established laws which organize the rights of citizens regardless of their religion in order to have harmonious coexistence, the grand jurist finds it necessary to abide by these laws and comply with their content. I didn't want to add, Lib, but that's very important for us. This is very important. And um, just, just to put, I'm almost finished, I promise. Something that, um, that Shekinah said to us earlier today was that in the system that we live in, it becomes obligatory for us to take part in this political system and vote so that we could have our voices heard. Because if we don't participate in this electoral process, then the laws that are made that go against us, we have no place to complain about it because we were not active in governing ourselves. So I do um, ask the forgiveness of the brothers and sisters here. I just wanted to reiterate how important this part is, actually the whole speech, so I'll, I'll continue, inshallah. Salli Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. There has been much clamor and fallacies regarding the view of Islam and those practicing it, practicing it toward women. The way a woman is treated, what right she has in looking into what she can, what she can do with the different situations in life and taking on work and other duties. The first evidence to support the truth of the view held by our faith regarding the reality of a woman is that it did not forbid her, the woman, from any position or rank in society or any right in which she would be able to be just as qualified as a man. There is no default principle which sets a man ahead of a woman in the cases where the religious legal text does not clearly state that a man is to be chosen or that the situation is specific to a man. Granted, these instances in which the situation is specified is specific to a man are very few, and the aim in them being specific to a man is known. All of them go back to aspects dealing with the religious issues in which the religious law took into account the nature of a woman which would have her inclined towards safeguarding her chastity and purity and being considerate toward her. In all other issues dealing with the fields of knowledge, learning, gaining virtues, elevated intellectual thought, 
positions of production of, and work, a woman is on the same footing as a man. Society, including men and women, do not hesitate to refer to a woman if she exceeds in the aspect of some industry or science. But if a woman should, but a woman should know the limits of her faith, her sanctity, and her modest dress before entering into public positions. For indeed, the corruption resulting from mixing between men and women without the religious guidance is no secret to a rational individual. It is an obligation to observe these limits according to the judge of the exalted Allah who knows the best interests of the servants. In conclusion, we would like to note to the dear believers that our imams and the leader, our imams and leaders, may God's blessing be upon them all, even though they were kept from their positions and ranks they were still pioneers in offering service to their societies. They did not hold back, may God's blessings be upon them, from giving help to the others or even offering advice to the oppressive governments which treated them with the most severe levels of exclusion and sidelines. Hence, the believers living abroad should actively participate in reforming society, offering services, and participating in choosing that which is best that which would take everyone by the hand to the, co to the coast of safety, even if they live under the reign of, of a non-Islamic authority. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessed and exalted, to grant you success and aid. May the peace, blessings, and mercy of, of Allah be upon you and upon the faithful men and women. Shukran jazeela. Thank you very much. Question answer card, Lamba program. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Hanif. Thank you very much for all Maulanas. And now let's we start the let's we start some question answer. If somebody have any questions, we can do it for short. Not uh if you need it. Don't repeat the whole thing. Don't don't just ask some something uh atla durti ayaje to amu question the wajak apla molana be on a job apis again. We don't understand and we near, really want to ask them because it's almost 10 30. So, if anybody have any questions, please don't be hesitate. Let's ask and we can ask. Aga, Fayyaz, sons. Anybody have any questions? Questions? Yes. There's a one question I want to, I have it with the Aga about, we have a mosque in India. And India in, Am in Ahmedabad. Huh? Well, there's a very good question because he knows, he knows about that question. We have a like Ahmedabad, we, live, we are from Ahmedabad. It's a very consistent city. It's like, you know, if you want to like, just like Nazab, if you want to go the two miles, it's going to take about five hours. So, and we got a one mosque is about two three hundred old year, old mosque, and that mosque is surrounding with the well very nice very nice very nice population like all Hindu population very nice area. And our town is totally surrounding with the Wahhabis. We got 80% Wahhabis. They control our city. And we got two places. We do the prayer of Zumma. And that both places surrounding with the Wahhabis is very hard to get in. 
is a very small road. If you want to go down there, it's take about three or four hours so you can be a get there and there's no parking. If you park your car outside this Wahhabi people cut your tires or there's no parking, sometime you miss the Juma. We got a lot of riots going on all the time, like Hindu Muslim riots. So sometime when you cross from the one one area to other area, it's not safe for us. But particular this mosque is about 150 meter distant, like whatever the Ayatollah suggests. 150 feet is, and a lot of people want want us to be start the Zuma there. So everybody can participate. We have a nice parking space. We can do everything very freedomly. Even other two mosques, we can't give a azan in the mic because of the Wahhabi. And here we can do everything. So we need to know. Our question is, can we do the Jumma namaz in that place? Even is the oldest mosque in Asia, and if we're not gonna be do something down there, we might gonna be lost that mosque. He says we can't change the law, uh, religious law. Okay. Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. By the way, he says uh, his eminence says the Jum'a prayer is mustahab. Also, there is no any high requirement to change or or to do some different uh, fatwa or new fatwa for it. So there is not big requirement for it. I think same thing we heard from the Aga Bashir too. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there is another another mm, suggestion. Let one of them pray Juma and another one pray Zuhrain, Zuhrain Asr. Yeah. yeah, that thing we're doing right now. Another question, please, a question regarding our communities. Some, yeah, some local, local problems, local challenges, if you have a question. Molana is here, he can answer. But we have still the letter. We have a copy. Can you? Can you? Oh, the question? The okay. Question? The answer is, we got a letter from Aga Sistani's with his stamp about what that we can do the zuma on that masjid. But somehow, when Aga Muswi was there, and Aga Muswi don't want to do those things, so Aga Muswi says, don't even talk about it. But we do have the letter written by the Aga Sistani and he got a stamp, we might want to deliver to okay. the letter. I don't know why you all the time you ask people about it. Last time you asked me, I sent email and the answer came same. So I, I got a pressure from India. I'm just letting okay. you know. OK, another question? Another question? Please don't repeat let's, the let's same we question. We can discuss about that one later. Yeah, okay, that one the, we can talk person to person. The main message we heard today, tonight, from uh, uh, Sheikh Ishaq Fayyad. If you have some question. Anybody some have any other questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Here you go. Mike. Alik. I have a question about the development in Iraq. Like, uh, Alhamdulillah, we try to go every year in our Iraq. But we really don't see much improvement. Why it's like, uh, let's say, the tourist guides or anything where we have a sign and a clock and English and uh, we go to the Wadi Salam and the cemetery has been broken up in pieces and everything and we see the dogs walking around in the holy city of Najah. The Karbala, holy city of Karbala has developed a lot. I mean it's getting better and better every time. The holy city of Najah as I'm going and even the dome of Imam Ali's uh, 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 shrine, we still see a lot of dust and everything. So is it due to the, the financial 
credentials, or is it uh, the power issue? I mean, I don't know what kind of issues uh, uh, are we facing over there. Like infrastructure in Saudi Arabia is so fast every year. Oh, if they want to build something, they can build it right away. Yeah. And in Iraq, the, it, we, we get a little hard Yeah, we got, we got. I think it's a huge project going on in the world. Uh, he says, very brief, he says that we can, you can compare Iraq with uh, some countries like Saudi. Saudi stables country, since so many years they are working on that and if we go to history, uh, Saudi what time they did it? Just if we compare it, it we'll see, uh, we will see there's big difference. In Iraq right now, after Saddam regime, we get back to Iraq, it was corrupted uh, from scratch. And uh, now, uh, after Saddam regime, also we had uh, Wahhabis and, and uh, terrorism issue during uh, years. They did fitna between Sunni and Shia. And uh, there are some politics powers too, there is, we can say no. But uh, still, with all these, Alhamdulillah, the security today is good. Yeah, Mu'minin comes from different countries and there is some development, slow, yes it is, but it needs time. No, financially, we don't believe there's a problem. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, actually, today, this is my uh, um, one, po one more point from myself, not from him. Today, we had some discussion. Some uh, friends, they uh, asked some question. Uh, Sheikh Ishaq Fayyad also has, he has different projects in Najaf for Hawza al Um They have two uh, important projects, one for students, they welcome students from overseas. They do some program for them. And the, another program, they work on buildings uh, on, uh, to build uh, uh, some awqaf uh, real estate, like uh, um, homes, apartments, uh, maybe uh, even, even business like hotels and others, uh, just to uh, support the religious areas and all our half issue. So they ask Mu'mineen if someone likes to make some investment there for Shia and Shiism, also they welcome. Well, I, s I just came back from uh, Nazaf. Nazaf is doing good. Our Marja is fighting against the government and our Marja also fighting with some other countries politics too. Yeah. So they are having a really hard time to stabilize those whole thing and our Marja don't take any help from anybody because they don't want, because this Hosa, they want to make this separate from everything else. And I'm just telling you everybody, they don't have, they are living so normal life. We are high middle class people. Try to be save the money. Apra madrasa challenge, emma fees je urako, tamaripa vadara paisa je, don't overexpose. Kenga mugos to apra laye je, muki de je, paisa waste aja apra. One dollar equal to, you know how many Iraqi dollar. There is an orphan place I went down there. My heart was cry. It's so many kids down there. They don't have food. If you want to help something, let's do something for the Hosa or some Hosa Ilmiya or something. We need to be figured out from us. We have to start from here. From Jafari Center, then automatically everybody else is going to be start yeah. step by step. Thank you, Hassan. They want to just listen to him. He, he will sit uh, with them and talk to them directly. Yes, sit, sit and do it. Molana, you are going to go اگر بهتر هست برای شما دوستان افغانی بیان اینجا که با هم حرف بزنید فیس تو فیس
خب بفرمایید آقایون افغانی بفرمایید اینجا دوستانی دوستانی که فارسی حرف میزنن بفرمایید اینجا مولانا مولانا آپ ترانسلیت کرو نا وی وانت ٹو ہیر یور وائس مولانا آپ اردو میں ٹرانسلیٹ کرو پلیز آپ اردو میں ٹرانسلیٹ کرو Molana, you can speak in Urdu. Ab Urdu mein bolna please. You want to translate? Koi tajib bol Urdu, lekin baad hum hum aarif English. Do ta mustajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة واللعنة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى يوم الدين خيري بند خوشحالة كدر ميان برادران إيماني وديني حستا ومدوارم كي این جو برادرانی که الان هست ادامه داشته باشه و روز به روز وحدت همبستگی بیشتر بشه انشاءالله بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سنای حمد الهی کے بعد محمد و آل محمد پر درود کے سلسلے کے ذریعے میں بہت خوش ہوں کہ آج برادران ایمانی کے درمیان اتنی دور آیا ہوں اور امید کرتا ہوں کہ ہمارا یہ برادرانہ سلسلہ قائم اور دائم رہے گر چلتا ہے وظیفہ شما برادران کہ در این دیار غربت حسید اینه که وحدت خودتان را حفظ بکنید آپ مومنین کا جو وظیفہ اور جو ذمہ داری ہے اس دیار غربت میں اپنے وطن سے دور وہ سب سے پہلے آپ کا وظیفہ یہ ہے کہ آپ آپس میں اتحاد اور اتفاق قائم رکھیں اور اسی طرح بھائی چارے کے ساتھ پیش آئیں و سعی بکنید ہمکاری سن را با ہم زیاد بکنید و با ہم مرابطے داشته باشید رفت آمد داشته باشید این رفت آمد ها محبت ها را بیشتر میکنه هم دردی را هم با ہم همدردی داشته باشید آپ لوگوں کو چاہیے کہ ایک دوسرے کے یہاں آتے جاتے رہیں اسی طرح سے ساتھ مل بیٹھ کر آپسی پریشانیوں کو دور کرتے رہیں اور خود اس کا اپنا ایک اثر ہے جو ساتھ بیٹھنے کا ہے وَبَحَمْدِرَلَّهُ در این کشور مؤسسات اسلامی زیاد هست علماء زیادی هستن و نمائنده های مراجع تشریف دارن از جمله برادر عزیزم جناب آقای عصد باقر کشمیری اگر مسائلی داشته باشید سؤالی داشته باشید می توانید به ایشان و امثال ایشان مراجعه کنید یا خودتان مستقیما الحمدلله همه مراجع وبسایت دارن این وبسایت دیگه خیلی کارها راحت کرده اس ملک میں الحمدللہ کافی مراجع کام کر انجام دے رہے ہیں جنہوں نے اپنے نمائندوں کے طور پر اپنے افراد کو یہاں رکھا ہوا ہے اور ان کے دفاتر چل رہے ہیں جیسے کہ آیت اللہ سستانی آیت اللہ عزمہ سستانی کا دفتر ہے اور آغا باقر کشمیری اس کو دیکھ رہے ہیں اگر آپ کو کوئی دینی پریشانی مشکلات ہو تو آپ کو ضرور ان مراجع کے دفاتر میں رجوع کرنا چاہیے اور یہ سب آپ کی پریشانی کو دور کرنے کے لیے کوششوں میں لگے ہو اور تقریباً تمام مراجع یا زیادہ تر مراجع نے اپنی آن لائن سائٹس بنائی ہوئی ہیں ان کے نظریات کو آپ ان سائٹس پر جا کر اور بچے تو ماشاءاللہ آج کل بہت زیادہ جانتے ہیں ان کو عادت ڈالیں کہ جس طرح اور سائٹس دیکھتے ہیں تو ان مراجع کی سائٹس پر جا کر ان کے نظریات اور اپنے شریع مسائل کو دریافت کریں جس نے آپ کے لیے کام کو بہت آسان بنا دیا ہے اور دوریوں کے فاصلے کو ختم کر دیا ہے بیشتر از این دیگه مصدقه وقت شما نمی شوم شما هم دیگه از راه دور و نزدیک تشریف آوردید خسته هم هستید در خاتمه حضرت آقا سلام گرم و سمیمانه خدمت تمام مؤمنی می رسانند و, و دعاگوی همه هستند 
و از شما هم التماس دعا دارند شما هم برای سلامتی مراجع اعظم نجف همیشه دعا بفرمایید و محتاج دعای شما هم مؤمنین هستند اس سے زیادہ میں آپ کے درمیان وقت کو میں حائل نہیں ہوں گا چونکہ تمام مراجع اور بالخصوص آغا آیت الفظم فیاض نے آپ سب کی کامیابی کے لیے دعا بھی فرمائی ہے اور ہمیشہ تمام علماء آپ سب کے لیے دعا کر رہے ہیں آپ لوگ بھی اپنی دعاؤں میں ان کو یاد رکھیں چونکہ ہم جانتے ہیں کہ آپ میں سے کچھ لوگ قریب سے آئے ہوں گے تو کچھ بہت دور سے آئے ہوں گے لہٰذا آپ کی اس آنے کی زحمت کو خدا بند عالم آپ کو آج عطا فرمائے والسلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ بندہ سید محمد اللہ بہادری خیلی خوشحال هستم شما در اینجا